President Trump tweeted last night that he used to like the idea of the popular vote. In a strongly worded tweet on election night 2012, however, he said that the Electoral College is a disaster for a democracy. After he lost the popular vote in 2016, however, he said multiple times that he could have won the popular vote if he had tried to. Figure that one out. Last night he tweeted, campaigning for the popular vote is much easier and different than campaigning for the Electoral College. It's like training for the 100-yard dash versus a marathon. It's an argument he's made several times while going back and forth on the popular versus the Electoral College. Let's watch him in action. The Electoral College is hard. It's hard and harder to win than popular vote. Popular vote, you go to three, four states and boom, boom, boom. You win the, it's like the 100-yard dash versus running the mile. You practice differently. I would rather have the popular vote because it's, to me, it's much easier. It's a, the Electoral College is much more advantageous for Democrats, as you know, than it is to Republicans. The Electoral College is very, very hard. They say almost impossible for a Republican to win. The odds are stacked. The Electoral College is genius. Anyway, I'm joined right now by Reid Hunt, the CEO of Making Every Vote Count, and Michael Steele, former spokesman for the House Speaker, John Boehner. Uh, Michael. Why don't we just count all the votes? What's wrong with the popular vote? Because this is the compromise that our founders gave us. At a time when President Trump is shredding democratic norms in this country, the last thing we need to do is destroy another one. We need to honor the founders' legacy and play the game the way it was meant to be played, protecting the small states, protecting minority rights, not increasing division by having a What's Democratic What's wrong with candidate. one man, one person, one vote? You get a Democratic candidate well, you're hanging not out in Michael. California. You're, you're talking about 300 years ago. What about now? Why don't we have a popular vote now? Because this is the compromise that was designed to and they, get, to protect. They small used states. to elect senators by the legislature of your state would pick senators, right? And, and, the, and we, we said, well, how about we, we make it popular? Mind. Yeah, well, why don't yeah. we do it? Popular Be vote. Because this allows candidates to campaign all over the country, have a truly national message in a national campaign, okay. rather than speaking just to their bases and ginning up the voters on the coast. Oh, Reid Hunt. How are you? Would you like to? Why, what's wrong with the electoral college? The electoral college causes the campaigns to focus on almost no states at all. Uh, in the last election, in more than 40 states, there were no visits, no get out the vote, no effort at all because the election results were assumed. More than 80 percent of the American population was ignored. And in this election, we're already saying in 2020, the election will be decided only in Florida, Pennsylvania, Michigan, and maybe Wisconsin. The purple states, This is ridiculous. Yeah. Well, what, what, where were they, uh, if we went to a popular vote right now, what would it look like, a presidential camp? Would they actually spend their time in California where you could roll up huge majorities in New York? Is that what people would do? Of course. So here's the way I look Why at it. Why would you go to Alaska in a popular vote? Here's the way I look at it. Uh, does a cell phone call go everywhere? Yes. Does Amazon send packages everywhere? Does a Walmart build a store in Arkansas? Businesses know how to reach everybody in the country. They know how to sell their product to everybody and campaign would use all the same techniques that business use in order to reach absolutely everybody in the country. And I don't want that. I don't want a candidate sitting in an apartment in New York dialing for dollars and running television ads. I want to make candidates get out in the country, go to a diverse collection of states, and actually meet voters, talk to them, hear their concerns, and make their case. And that's what the Electoral College forces them to do. What do you think people think of democracy when they see Hillary Clinton, who or any, or any candidate, get three or four million more votes than the winner? And walk away the loser. The, uh, by the way, if Trump had come up three or four right. minutes short, what do you think he would have well, done? It's massively frustrating. I, I frustrating. Do not Trump might have been massively frustrated. Trump might have rejected this the results. This is why this is so popular in the Democratic primary right now. It's a base play to frustrated Democrats who've seen this happen twice in 20 years. Well, I get it. Okay. According to the Pew Research Center, 55% of Americans would support amending the Constitution so that the person with the most votes wins, while 41% support keeping the Electoral College. Explain that, Reid. Why do some people want to keep the Electoral Vote? First, let me give you an up-to-date poll. We did a poll, our group, that concluded last week 76% of the people in Ohio believe that every vote in the country should be counted equally, and the majority believe that whoever wins the national vote ought to be the president. If you go state to state across the country, everybody is going to show in their state a majority that believes that the national vote winner should be the president, because that's fair play, because that's the way we you run You mean even everything. in the little states like Montana, which has one electoral vote or one a member of Congress, three electoral votes, even those states would like to go to a popular vote? They all believe that the national vote winner should become the president. And in states like Montana, everybody has the following experience. The candidates pay no attention to them. 
The results are taken okay, for granted. Okay, let's talk Turkey here. Uh, it takes three quarters of the states to uh, change the Constitution. Is there an alternative route? Yes, there is. There it is, by the way. Thirteen states are currently signed on to what's called the National Popular Vote Interstate Compact, where states pledge to give their electoral votes to the winner of the National Popular Vote. The compact wouldn't take effect until enough states sign up to equal the 270 electoral votes needed to win the presidency. And right now, the participating states have a total of 181. Are you going to get to 270? Any state in the United States can pass a law deciding how its electors are going to be appointed. And I predict that as the Democratic candidates and the Republican candidate go through the primaries in the spring of 2020, in every single state, this issue will be joined. And the legislators in every single state are going to have to say to the people in that state, are we supporting the national vote? Are we supporting the idea of an equal vote for every single person? That's the way it'll play out in 2020. And I predict that if, say, my state of North Carolina votes for Kamala Harris for president, Trump wins the popular vote, and North Carolina tries to send electors pledged to Trump to the Electoral College, there will be riots in the street. This is the system that was created as a compromise to protect the smaller states, protect states' rights, and it is a system that has worked with some what happened, what happened, for, I want to ask you Reese, what happens when we have a president lose a presidential campaign by 10 million votes, because it's getting that way, it's polarizing, and doesn't get the job? What are people going to do then? Talk about rioting. Uh, to me, President Trump should want to go out and win the national popular vote, just like he said the time before this. He is somebody who actually would love to do that campaigning, and he said it before. His handler should get out of the way and let him go out and try it. Yeah. I mean, every candidate, I think, for president would like to win the popular and electoral vote. But the system that we have now, you don't determine the winner of a baseball game based on attendance. It tells you something, but it doesn't tell you who won or lost. The hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.